All right. And here we go. The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. and shine my sinners when father evil starts his day he gets a little deadly deadly grounds coffee has the richest smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere it's sinfully delicious once you go deadly you never go back order yours at getdeadly.com coffee's so good <coughs> it's scary Persons under 18 will not be admitted. we gonna do now get high hey hey yeah it's wednesday valentine's day i was told so yeah. hopefully, hopefully you got a hard on for somebody out there but uh anyway <laughs> <laughs> we uh you know surprise leo's not here he's uh spending valentine's day with his lovely missus but that's okay because i'm here and guess who else is here i got uh 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 this guy holy crap i'm in the beginning credits <laughs> yes well, you are. That, that that is so cool i you bitched and bitched and bitched you know about that that is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. I'm I'm a little a little taken aback. Well, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh well, thank you. Let me bend over. I mean, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh Jar Jar's filling in for me because I'm filling in for Leo. And as always, Mr. Jeffrey. Valentine's Day. What does that mean to you people out there? Does it mean does it mean love? Does it mean sex? 
Does it mean woodies and wetness? Or does it mean horror and psychopaths? Like our guest. All the above. All of the above. <laughs> Let's welcome Richard Walters. Yay! Hello. Happy to be here welcome, on this welcome. Valentine's. Uh, with a heart on, but not much else. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you know, oh, I don't God. want to ask you how that would get there, but, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so I, my first question is, what the hell are the feet hanging on the wall behind you? Ah, you beat me to it. It's, uh, I went to China. I went to China like four or five times. I was going to find me a wife over there, but uh, that didn't expensive. work out. They're too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that particular... That's supposed to be Buddha's feet from, um, oh, they call it, uh, oh, damn it. It's uh, this building, it's a structure. And uh, anyways, you know, they, they, they prepare that for you. They put this red pastel or whatever it, and then it's, it's a print. And then you get that print and then they frame it. That, that's where that's from. Oh. Yeah. From Buddha's building. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Buddha's uh, it's Buddha's feet. Yeah. It's Buddha's feet just... in China. Okay. Yeah. Kind of... And the city is Xi'an. X I A N. And that's where the good... Silk Road began oh. years ago. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. You know, so that's we, different. we've actually had the 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 pleasure of um hanging out and, and being on the road with you um multiple times interviewing you from cons but this is a lot different because like i said before we went live this is unfiltered we don't have to worry about the little boy sitting in the third row that we could offend so you know let's have some fun yeah there's plenty of other people out there we can do that with <laughs> right, right? Oh, i'll do my best yeah you know what i mean we'll see so i mean obviously <laughs> you know we uh we wanted to have you on tonight because it is valentine's day and because yeah. you played the psychopath in, uh, uh, you know, I one of the most, time. yeah, yeah, one of the most famous dead killer movies that, you know, I actually watched it again today because I, I just had to, you know what I mean? And some of them scenes in that movie, you know, they, I mean, for, for 2009, unbelievable. Right. Yeah, they're good kills. They got some good kill scenes in there. You know, you right. really pricked. You, you really a, pricked a lot of people. <laughs> and then there's, yeah, and there's some good suspense a, too. You know, do you have a favorite so. way to kill people? <laughs> I think when the pickaxe went through Tom Atkins' head, that was the best kill scene in the movie. Yeah, but uh, that, that's. Um, yeah, that's. I guess that's my favorite way to, way to kill people is put a pickaxe through their head. You know, come up through the jaw. Right. Come up and through then the you jaw, can, rip, rip their face off. You could drag them around. <laughs> right. So has yeah. acting always been the, the main goal, or are there other adventures for Mr. Walters? <sighs> um. God almighty. Well, look, right now I'm uh, just trying to play some uh, open mic nights with my guitar. Uh, I want to do some more, um, uh, you know, acting, but that takes me finding an agent and then uh, starting to put my uh, stuff back out there. You know, I got to uh, I got to submit some. Um, I have to do some submissions, uh, you know, with, with these auditions or whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean, a it's a pain in the ass. Is that I? You know, for me, it's a real pain in the ass because I'm, I'm sort of stuck in the time when we were sending our eight by tens in, and then letting them call us. You know, you got to be aggressive and you know send a video audition in, and, and um, I'm not even set up for that yet. So <laughs> uh, I got to get with the uh, 21st century here and uh, get on it. But okay. um, yeah, it, it's it's still acting is still, you know, the number one preferred thing to do, and um, no, it's it's really the only thing I'm doing right now. I mean, other than playing guitar, um, right, right, you know, 
Yeah. You know? Now you look. Are you looking to do more horror movies, or are you looking to change it up, or if you actually don't give a fuck, just give me a part? Yeah, I mean, I actually don't give a fuck. I mean, I mean, really, <laughs> if if it's a cop or a criminal, I can fucking play him. You know what I mean? So, right. You know, but I, you know, I like to think my range goes beyond that. But uh, you know. Um, I definitely could see myself as, you know, sort of the authoritative figure or bad guy, you know, and so, so those, those those are roles that I look for, you know, obviously somebody a little, a little bit on the older side of things, you know, since I got to, got to recognize that I'm uh, 62 years old now. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's always porn you know. for the elderly. They're porn for the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe an OnlyFans where I'm banging some young chick, man. There you go. Get really That's going. My... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, and Lee, like I said, folks, Leo's not here, so it Jeff's going to derail the show real fast. <laughs> and I'm just going to watch. Sit here. And oh watch God! Him pull you're going right to watch what? Rail. Watch Jeff him pull derail it, it or no, you're going to watch the no, OnlyFans? No, I'm not watching the. Well, I might watch the OnlyFans, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll do Shakespeare only fans and bang a young chick. Yeah, that's it. You know, well, now you, now you, you go got your reel gonna, to send out. You know, you can't be rich. You're Richard. You got to be Dick. So, yeah, there it is, you, Dick. You know, <laughs> Dicky Walters. <laughs> Dick Walters. Yeah, <laughs> that was my that was my father's name. That's why I always called him Dick. So I don't want to I don't want to talk shit on my dad. I'm here yeah, he, 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 was, he was a dick. Yeah, but he was a good person. He was a great person. I love my father. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Where he did you grow up? Yeah. I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And oh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You, you Boston fans, right? Uh, you broke our hearts a number <laughs> of times and probably both hockey and um and football. But um yeah, this is where I grew up and um I went to LA and from 2001 to 2006, and then um, you know I was recently living in New Jersey, but uh, went to school in West Virginia University where I played football. Nice. But um, yeah, I spent most of my time here. Uh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we um, have broke your hearts numerous times in sports. Yeah, man. Mostly yeah. hockey. See, I'm a big hockey fan. And yeah. other, than, other than our biggest rivalry, rivalry, which was the Canadians, Pittsburgh was always number two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. It seems like the, the Bruins knocked them out a couple times in the playoffs, didn't they? Jesus right. Christ. Well, knocked them up, knocked them out, beat the crap out of each oh. other. I mean, those were the, those were the yeah. great days, you know? Yeah. You know, Mar and Mario then, Lemieux. And then, and, yeah. You know, the name of the team is yeah. wrong. I mean, who the fuck wants to be a penguin? <laughs> <laughs> a flightless bird. Yes, you know, of course. That makes yeah. a lot of sense to They're me. They're amazing you know? on the ice, so you should see a penguin. <laughs> they were some of the best. I remember, I mean, like, yeah, back in the I, day. I yeah. remember the, the the Boston fans would call the day after the series was over, and after they had after Boston beat Pittsburgh in the playoffs, they would call the local sports radio stations to mock Pittsburgh. And they cut down the Pittsburgh fans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of class, those Boston uh, Boston fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. We can handle it. Now, yeah. Some of the best rivalries in, in hockey, you know, growing up watching it in, in, the, in the 80s and 90s was Pittsburgh. You know, they were always great games, too. That was the thing. And you were guaranteed to see blood, just like, you know, if you watch some of Richard's movies, you're guaranteed to see some blood. I'm just saying. Kind of goes. Yeah, there. they were physical games. Yeah. You know. Right. Very much so. No. But, you know, you've you've done other things other than My Bloody Valentine. You were in um, Boston Public as well. Yeah. All right. I had a small role in Boston Public as an Argentine tango dancer. Um. Because you are a ballroom <laughs> dancer. Yes, I, I do like to. Uh, I, I do like to dance with the ladies on the floor. Yes, and a little, um, little bump and grinding going yeah, on there. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I always wrong. thought Django was pretty classy. I don't know. Like I, yeah, I started doing like uh, rockabilly in the nineties. Uh, uh, I was listening to rockabilly bands at the local bar, and then um, everybody started swing dancing. And then the people that were swing dancing were doing some salsa dancing. And then I ran into Argentine tango after that. And it just was a very, very classy dance, I thought, you know. And um, so uh, <clears throat> I sort of, I just gravitated towards it. Um, I actually danced in China, too, you know. That was, that was fun. You know, you can dance all over the world. Well, you can dance all over the world with any dance, but... Um, Hey, dancing they in do one do of those big large... giant dragons doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the horizontal bop. That's another uh, right? dance they do at dance all over right. the world, too. So right? I know what exactly. your next gig is. I know what your next gig should be. Why don't you want Dancing with the Stars? Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> dancing with the Horror Stars, right? Something like that. We'll have to have uh, horror icons dancing or something. I don't know. That would actually be pretty cool because there's a lot. There's a, well, that, actually, it would be pretty cool because you have a lot of male horror icons and you have a lot of female horror icons. That's I could true. see that be, you know, come out all bloody and, you know, yeah, that, that would be actually be pretty fucking wild. I'd watch it. That's the thing. You, you okay over there, Jeff? It's getting some <laughs> karma. <laughs> Yeah, you're not allowed to die on the show, dude. You know that, right? <laughs> Wrong we'll, pipe. We'll That's talk. what she said, too. Right. I'm practicing for Richard later. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> How long have you yeah. been playing guitar for? I've started... Uh, I got done with playing football and um, after my sister pawned off the only guitar in our household when I was 14, um, I, I was living in Charleston, West Virginia after graduating from West Virginia university. And I started taking lessons uh, when I was 23 years old. So, and I used to take uh, lessons at the place called the fret and fiddle back in, um, off the Coal River in St. Albans. And um, so I've been playing a long time off and on, but I'm, you know, I'm no virtuoso, but, uh, you know, I can put three chords together and sing a song. So that's like where I'm at, I guess. Well, yeah. So, I, you know, God almighty. Uh, I guess 30 years. I play is the piano or not the piano, the, the, the radio. I know how to turn it on and off, turn it up, down. I thought you were going to say the stations. skin flute. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not allowed to play that. <laughs> not on TV <laughs> no. anymore. No, I, well, I picked up the guitar 30 years ago. I still suck. Mm. Really? Well, you got to do more than just pick it up. <laughs> well... I was I, I started doing well and then I busted my hand all up. That kind of oh uh, yeah, I do remember you know, that. Put a damper on you. Yeah, so you know, but mm. I still I still fiddly fuck around with it every once in a while. Right, right. right. You know, mo mostly to scare the cats. <laughs> <laughs> they don't try to sing along or anything. So oh no, no, they're gone. What's your favorite <laughs> style of music to play, Richard? I guess it's uh country, I guess, you know, really. I like a guy named John Prine. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking about a song I was going to play for you, and I was thinking about playing Sweet Virginia by the Stones. I'd like to play that if I get a chance. I don't know. Um, but uh, it's really like, uh, I guess you'd call it hillbilly or country folk kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I know I don't read because I asked you to learn one thing and you didn't fucking do it and spent almost a year. I, I, like, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, there's a lot of the, the problem with my, that John. I, I can, I can still, you know, I can whip up that song. You know, if I have to, I'll do it. I mean, um, I just got to find it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. See, it, it, the problem with country roads is that it's um, it uh, it's got a lot of chord changes, and I can't fucking remember the chord changes. So, um, you know, that's that's the issue there. Okay. But, uh, so I gave you a true challenge then. Like, yes. All right, I gotta shut this guy up. Is what he's saying. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he already grabbed it. Seven. West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mount Mama, take me home. Country roads, <laughs> all my memories gather around her. Later, later, had to prove you wrong. Water, dark and dusty, painted on the sky. I miss the taste of moonshine, tear drop in my eye. Country roads, take me home. To the place I belong, West Virginia, Mount Mama, take me home, country roads. I hear a voice in the morning hours calls me. Radio reminds me of my home far away. Driving down the road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday. Tyranating. Yesterday. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. Country roads, take me home. Shit. I don't remember that being in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. He shut you up Where on you that out? one. Sign that man up. <laughs> All right. Now I got to come up take with his shirt. I got to come up with something new to bust your nuts about now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yeah. yeah. No, that was wonderful. Thank you very much. Hi, you're very I welcome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, but you seriously are a John Denver fan. You mean it, right? I mean, you like you like, you like him. Yeah. Um, He's cool. There are two no. musicians, two. That have died in, in during my lifetime that I cried for. John Denver was one. Can I guess the second? Go ahead. Neil Peart. No. Wow. No. Really? No. Meatloaf. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, no, meatloaf. really. Yeah. Yeah. I figured Neil Peart would have been the, the second one, being the the Rush fan that you are. Yeah. No. Ah. He, um, well, that's because I read his book. Oh, uh, true that, true that. I'll you know, give you that so, one. You know. So you cried during the book instead. Oh yeah, it's heart wrenching. <laughs> it is. His 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 book was heart wrenching. You know, a lot of people don't they don't understand what he went through. Right, right. You know. So this is the guy from Rush. Yeah, the drummer. The drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. He um he went through a spell after you know the rush's actual last album before they took that four or five year hiatus and he jumped on his bmw motorcycle and drove over fifty thousand miles wow. 
That's what he did. Cool. Yeah. I used to you own a I mean? BMW, so that's cool. Yeah. And then he wrote a book about it. Yep. Nice. You know, so it was a journey for him. You know, he had a lot of losses in his life. So, yeah. You know, which it's was heart wrenching. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what life is, right? Living and losing and living again, I guess, or something. Pretty much. Pretty much. So you um you mentioned before the show that you have a, a, a an appearance coming up this this coming weekend in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. He's right. like, oh, shit, shit. now <laughs> I now I gotta find those notes. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> let me look look at my notes again. Uh, yeah. So it's called I don't know why they call it a sideshow horror sideshow horror sideshow market. It's this Saturday, February seventeenth, ten a.m. to four p.m. Delta Hotels by Marriott, Allentown, Lehigh Valley, PA. And, and I got this address, 7736 Adrian Drive, Brannigsville, PA, 18031. That's this weekend. And then next Saturday, February 24th, I'm going to be in Houston at the Eureka Heights Brewery for a meet and greet. That's a 941 18th Street, Houston, Texas, 77008. And that's our midnight media entertainment people. They put on the Houston um, Horror Film Fest. You know, Tony Rodriguez. And yep, Tony. Yep. Does. Yeah. yeah. Tony's a great guy. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> that's uh, Tony and Justin, correct? That's right. That's right. right, right. Yeah. yeah. Those actually, are my guys. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're great guys. They We're do amazing things. Absolutely. With all your traveling, where's the most exciting place you'd say you've been to? China. What, do, or do you not normally get to go out and play? Ah, uh, well, um, these horror cons, uh, I actually don't, I, I got to get out more for the horror cons. You know, I haven't, I haven't taken in, you know, I haven't taken in enough of the uh, local uh, flower and fauna. I need to get get out some more, but um, I, I, you know, man, like I'd say, uh, like China was like living on Mars or something, or like it's, it was the most different place on the planet. You know, I I remember talking to a woman there, or, or a woman who I met Argentine tango dancing, and she was mm. from Russia, and she actually owned a fucking art gallery in China for a, for a while, and she said. To me, it was, you know, it was the most different place on the planet. You could, it's like a different, everybody looks different. The language is different. You know, the alphabet's fucking totally different. It's just so foreign, <laughs> everything about it. So it's, you know, to me, that's the most interesting place, you know, that I've been. It's, you know, I've, I've been to Europe and all that. And, um, yeah, but it's still, still China would be the. Uh, Did you get the, to see the Great Wall? You know what I I yeah, I uh, I did not go to see the Great Wall because you know it's actually like an hour and a half bus ride from Beijing to the Great Wall and I I don't know I decided not to uh, there was uh, you call it an artist collective there was an old factory I went to the four one eight factory to the five four three eight factory I don't know what the hell it was it was full of artists or whatever like I decided that go that day to go this sort of artist factory but i did see in xian the same place i got this thing i went to see the terracotta warriors those are the those are these uh life-size warriors you, you, you've probably seen those on television yep that uh that uh, evil emperor you know made thousands of these warriors for his uh crypt and um that was pretty impressive yeah so that was that was pretty interesting. Although I didn't see the Great Wall, I did see that though. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I was just wondering how yeah. great it was. You know, <laughs> it's a wall. Yeah, it was, it's a wall. <laughs> Does yeah, yeah. I mean, like, thing. yeah. The, the, the thing about isn't that, isn't that what they say? The Great Wall. It, it's a wall, and like the part you go see was built in like you know fifteen hundred and something anyway. So that's well, I don't know. That's, that's not exotic or that old to me. Um, <laughs> You know, I want to go yeah. big time. I want to see, 
things that are like a couple thousand years old or something, man. Right. Yeah, right. Right. You know? Did you ever see the movie? <laughs> well, what movie? Sorry. The Great Wall. Uh, the, the who's in that movie? Sorry. That's um, help me. Um, Matt Damon. No. Matt Damon. Yes, Matt Damon. Yeah. Oh, all right. I have seen that movie. Yeah, that's okay. They yeah, got a yeah. lot of criticism because you know he's he's a white guy, blah blah blah. But it was okay. You know that it was it was fairly entertainment. You know it's it was a fantasy kind of movie. But uh, oh yeah, oh absolutely. Yeah, but but it, you know it it was okay for me. Yeah, it was all right. Action. I loved it. Right, right. Yeah. So so if you could pick anybody to work with in film who would it be and why ah fuck <laughs> that was a hard one two words that came into my head since we said matt damon his name was in my head and he seems like a pretty cool guy to work with and then uh fuck who's the guy gladiator what's what the fuck is his name russell oh, russell crow russell crow I think he'd be interesting to work with. I don't know. I mean, and I guess, and and the why would be, well, there are big name draws at the fucking box office, right? So that's why you'd want to hook up with those guys, I guess. But um, I don't know. I, I guess, uh, you know, they come with a lengthy filmography or whatever. I mean, um, <laughs> I was thinking about Leonard Nimoy. I wish he was still alive. I'd like to be fucking on the same screen with him right you know yeah uh it just because he's i still like i was telling you guys before i still watch those fucking star treks those old star treks I love every night star you know? yeah man they're so fucking they still hold up right. um yeah just and the characters you know just you know his logical character yeah i could be the emotional uh Guy that can't, you know, just go crazy. Or the guy that can't keep his emotions in check, and he could be the guy that keeps the emotions in check, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there wasn't. There wasn't there an episode like that where there was the evil Spock, and then they had that. They were they had to battle each other, right? Yeah, they had a separate. They were a parallel universe where everybody was um, the evil opposites. It was the evil opposite. And he had yeah, like yeah. a this Fu Manchu mustache, you know, yeah, uh, hair, yeah, yeah. and um, although he was he was more diabolical, but he was still logical but diabolical, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then right. Kirk was the crazy one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and there's another one where Kirk gets separated, but that but but Spock keeps his uh, personality. Right, right. Yeah. So you watch a lot of technical now, difficulties. As far as the original, the original series goes, do you have a favorite episode? Oh. Well, one is when they first face off with the Romulans, and it's you know, I like I love that one actor. He goes down with his ship at the end. And he blows himself up, and is I, I, I fear, Captain. In life, we could have been friends, but one thing's left, and that is duty. And he fucking blows himself up in the ship. <laughs> so that's the one with the Romulans, the first, when they first face off with the Romulans. And then there's one. I, it, it, this isn't the name of it, but it, but I remember Kirk says something like, "But what of Lazarus?" And Lazarus was this like it's it's not rated real high. But he was like, there was like the antimatter Lazarus and the good Lazarus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. when they met, and they met in their spaceship, they had to meet in the spaceship, the thing for some reason. So the universe, <laughs> I forget how this goes exactly. They yeah, have I to meet have to, yeah. to keep the universe together, and right. like they're going to be battling each other for eternity or something like that. And, and Kirk says, but what of Lazarus, you know, so right, right. that always, to uh, me, I, I can't remember what the episode was about. I just remember that hot chick in the green, the green chick <laughs> that, that he was all over. You remember that one? 
Yeah, yeah, that might have been the uh, the pilot where she goes, I can be anything you want me to be. And, like, you know, she comes out as this green dancer or whatever the hell it is. And uh, But there was another green lady on the other the other day where they go to the planet and um, this one guy takes over the planet and then it's, it's a mental health colony or a mental colony or, or a place where they put mentally ill people. And this woman was wearing all green yeah. and she was very attractive too. Yeah. yeah so. Green body with nothing much else. Yeah, man. The, the green body the day, does something for me. You know, green, blue, yeah. it all works. Do you watch any of the, <laughs> the newer Star Trek things that are out, like Discovery or uh, Actually, Picard. Discovery was a great series. I like Discovery. You guys, yeah, you guys were telling me the Discovery. I, I guess I'm watching the Heroes and the HI channel. Is that what the hell it's called? I don't know. Um, uh, I guess I guess I, guess I got to get hip to Discovery. That's the problem. Right, right. right. Have, yeah. you, have you seen... So they, they um, have you seen any of the Star Trek Continues, that series? Um, what is that the second series or is that the... No, it's... What uh, is that? That, was, that was even after, like, Discovery and all of that stuff. Uh, Vic Mignogna plays um, oh, the one Captain Vic, Kirk. Yeah, it's on YouTube. That's all free on YouTube. No, no, no. I think like, I there's, might have seen it, yeah. I think there's, like, 12 I think episodes. I, no, I, I think I've seen one of them. Yeah I, yeah, I think he does all right. You know, those guys. Yeah, he you does know. all right. I, what I liked about it was that they went back to the way it was done when, uh, uh, you know, it was James T. Kirk and, and back in the day in the, 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 the 60s there. Yeah, they, they seemed to they really reproduce his... that whole feel. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that was his intent. For a fucking YouTube production, man, they seemed to really yeah. reproduce the feel. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You can actually go visit the set, too, for free, I think yep. Vic was saying. Yeah, yeah, it's in Georgia. Huh. Yeah, Georgia and where is yeah. that set at? Is that in LA? Uh, no, it's Georgia. in Georgia. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It was about, I think it was about an hour from where we were um, at the Georgia Pop and Horror Con. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and Vic's there once a month. He's scheduled once a month that he will be there and people can come and meet him and he'll give you the tour. And Yeah. Nice. Yep. Pretty impressive what they did with that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know. Huh. So, um, yeah. What kind of skiing did you used to do? Skiing? Skiing. Well, you, did you ski? I, I, yeah, I've, 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 uh, I you used must to, never uh, be bored. It, well, I, it's, it's been a while, but they used, to, they used to have this special back in college. It was $6 a lift ticket, and then, um, it was six dollars to rent your skis, man. That's how long ago this was. Twelve bucks to go skiing. That right. was like the best deal. Can't even and, get um, for that now. <laughs> I know, man. And uh, one time there was a there was a ski patrol guy. He came up and ripped my lift ticket off me. And and he goes, I go, what's what'd you do that for? Because you're doing aerials and you're drinking out of a Buddha. Like and the Buddha's, you know, the, the thing with you put the wine in or whatever. That, yeah, yeah. We called it a Buddha in West Virginia. And um doing aerials. Are you kidding me, man? I weigh 260 pounds. This is when I was playing football, man. I couldn't get off the ground for anything doing aerials. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh snow yeah, skiing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I used to do a little downhill skiing, yeah. Okay. I could probably get down and you know, down. I got a metal knee right now, but uh, I could probably still do it. I'd be afraid to fucking twist that thing, but right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Twist it, never mind. Yeah, that. It's too fucking cold. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's some shivers right up your spine. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking knees Problem, are cold. Yeah, yeah God, yeah, oh. that's for sure. It was like a witch's tip huh. brass bra, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah brass oh dear. Yeah. You know, just saying. <laughs> what what'd you do to you need it to get a steel one? Um after I was done playing football, I was playing rugby and um <laughs> we were doing a mauling drill, you know, and mauling's when you, you hold, you know, you're standing up and twisting around 
with the ball and you try to take the ball off each other. Some jackass came in and hit me really low and, and snapped out my uh, anterior crucial ligament. And then uh, I still played rugby without an ACL for freaking, you know, from the time I was like 23 or 24 till I didn't get an operation until I was till after 50 years old. And uh, but that's why I got the metal knee because it wore down so much <clears throat> that I just had to have a metal knee. <clears throat> and that's and that was a rugby injury. Okay. I just didn't know if you were yeah. on your knees a lot for any particular reason. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That always goes uh, back to that. I'm on my knees, <laughs> I'm praying to God. Uh, yeah, that's my that's what I'm <laughs> Yeah, on yeah. Knees. We can't take Jeffrey anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can try. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. So, well, uh, now, now, you... go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Ben. No, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, do, do you, uh, like, ever get bored, like, seriously, from rugby, football, skiing, dancing, uh, playing guitar? Uh, swimming, You're wrestling. a lawyer. Yeah, swimming, wrestling. Like, do you sleep? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, like... <laughs> You guys must be looking off a resume that I put together like 20 years ago or something. <laughs> I, uh, I am not as active as I used to be, but, uh, well, um, right. Well, exactly. Uh, older. doesn't mean you didn't do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I got to explain that to my wife all the time. I guess, you know, I'm, it's not that I'm bored like right now, but I, you know, I, I, I kind of thirst for something to keep my brain going, you know. Um, I feel like playing guitar and memorizing songs is going to preserve my brain, you know. I'm kind of worried about rotting away like that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to start doing these, um, or I have been, but I want to do some more, you know, these uh, open mic nights to uh, just to, you know, I, you know, I know when I'll do it, I'll be super afraid, you know, but to get through that fear will be good for me. So, uh, I just, uh, yeah, I guess I do get bored, but that's why I challenge myself to get me out of my space, to get me out of my funk, you know? Okay. Yeah. If I'm getting yeah. bored and I'm getting depressed, I think. So I got to get away from that. Well, it's not too late to learn how to knit. <laughs> Crochet. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking needle point. <laughs> right, right. It works for some guys. I don't know. Oh, well, if you ever get to that point, you're crocheting and fucking knitting and doing needle point, we'll put together a show yeah. for you. And you can come on <laughs> once a week and you can knit in needle point. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can... He can For do sure. appearances like uh, uh, what's his name at the at the elderly centers. Don oh, Yeso. like Don Yeso. <laughs> Don Yeso at the elderly centers. Yeah, at the elderly center. Call it yeah. bingo. bingo. Poor guy, he's not even on our show tonight. We're ragging on him. <laughs> uh -huh. Have you had uh -huh. Don on your show? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Don, he's Don a good man. Is, he's yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's fun. He's fun to harass. <laughs> you know. Especially when he's not standing right. next to you. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. Uh, yeah, he's a big guy. I, I yeah, he's, uh, he stays in shape. He's in shape. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yep. <coughs> so uh, yeah. with the music, do you have you seen any really iconic concerts or anything like that? Oh, well, now he's gonna date himself. I know, like you guys probably aren't into this, but I like this band. I mean, I used to like them in college, like Echo and the Bunnymen. Like, uh, I I thought they were really cool, <laughs> and uh, I saw them in uh, Los Angeles at the Hard Rock Cafe. And I remember living out there, working as an extra back in the early aughts, and uh, going down there to try to get a ticket when it was sold out, and and uh, and this one British guy goes, here, take them. He goes, 
and I, I was like in shock because I can give them to somebody else, <laughs> you know. And so this 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 guy gave me two tickets, and I, nice. I of course I didn't have anybody with me, so I gave one away. And um, but it was like a great show, and um, I don't know, man. Like I, I was telling somebody the other day that the, the Ramones came to West Virginia University and played at the Mountain Lair, and I think. D.D. Ramon was the uh, bass player, and when the show was over, he leaned over and gave me his uh, his pick. Nice. So I thought that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and then um, and, and then like uh, we played in the, our my football team played in the Peach Bowl back in college, and uh, there's a Oh God! There's a neighborhood in in Atlanta called Peach Tree or Peach something or I don't know what the hell it is. But we were peachy. Uh, we, we, yeah, something. And we were at a bar, and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis wow. was there, and I got my autograph off of him. And then he was there for the week, I guess. And then he just started playing. And then you know, so. So we got a special guest in the audience tonight, Jerry Lee Lewis. And, you know, it's like this is like a regular bar, and he gets up on stage and starts playing. So that That's was a pretty, pretty cool pretty moment. Cool. Mm. Yeah. So that was all right. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. And then I, I don't know, man. Like I've seen the Stones before. I my my parents gave me uh let me take my my parents were it was the fucking seventies, man, and they, everybody was so laid back. They let me take. My car from Pitts, my parents' car from Pittsburgh to Buffalo to see uh, the Rolling Stones in concert. And I remember like getting stoned on the way up and stoned on the way back. And crazy. <laughs> I don't remember yeah, the man. concert though. <laughs> I don't remember the concert. I just remember getting there. Yeah, back. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I do remember the concert. It was okay. They only played for an hour. Like, yeah, I don't know. It was, oh, that it was okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, you go, you go all that way, and like, you know, it wasn't. I think they actually put more into their shows now than they did so. back then. I mean, that was freaking. Well, uh, well, nineteen seventy-seven. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a long time ago, Before and um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Holy shit! Wow. Okay. Yeah, I can't think of any other shows. I used to, man, fuck, I used to see all kinds of shows, man. But legendary shows. Mm. Well, I saw The Who. Nice. The in when I was in high school at the Civic Arena, and that was like the week before they went to Cincinnati, when all those people, like eleven people, died because they let oh, them in. The, yeah, the in a the, mad yeah. rush. Idiots. The general promoters. admission. Yeah, general admission. Yeah. yeah, let them run onto the floor, and they, you know, fucking everybody died, or all those people died. But that was the enthusiasm, anyway, for them. I remember the movie Quadrophenia coming out, and people being into it when they played that before the concert started. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh... Classic, classic horror flicks. Okay, I'm talking from 70s, 80s, maybe into the early 90s. If you had the choice to play one of the psycho killers, who would you pick? Ooh. Uh, well, I guess I like Michael Myers because of the background music. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yep, yep. That Halloween thing where they're playing that fucking music, it just builds the suspension up so much. And so I, I guess I would like to be that guy, I guess. Um, okay. Or, uh, you know, God. Who wouldn't want to be, or want, who wouldn't want to have Jack Nicholson's role in The Shining? You know, that'd be. Oh yeah, right, right. That'd be something. 
And you'd look good sticking yeah, your head through a door. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just go insane over time, you know. Totally degenerate. Yeah. That would be fun. Right. <clears throat> How has okay. the con experience actually been for you? Have you signed anything like really weird or had any like really strange uh uh fan experiences? Yeah, he's having one. No, now. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm always impressed with people making their own little projects and oh, hell, somebody made a little model of me or something like that. Like a, the last one I went to in San Antonio um, and had me sign it. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with the enthusiasm, the creativity. Uh, um, uh, and uh, now there's, you know, I don't, I, I can't think of anybody being weird, you know, or uh, find any boobies. <laughs> I have, I have, I have yet to sign anybody's breasts. Damn, uh, I know. That's when you know you've made it. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess so. Maybe that's what we need. All right. Maybe. I'll fix yeah. that problem the next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna let me sign your breasts? Sure, why not? <laughs> Perfect. Oh dear. <laughs> hey, you should be thankful I'm offering my breasts. Hey, listen, whatever, man. Whatever, whatever the two of you do in your hotel room is up to you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if we went there, we wouldn't sign Richard. He'd just write dick. <laughs> that's because that's all it can fit. Maybe just uh, one. Dickie was here. Uh. Oh man! So, so is any, anything new coming down the line for you, Richard? Uh, there's, you know, like I say, there's. Uh, I got to get off my ass and start doing some auditions. There's not any movies. Or movie projects in the pipeline, and so I need to. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got to make amends. I got to fucking get that going. I got to get that moving. Uh, nah, man, I'm just you know I'm just fucking doing open mics, playing music. What about that's my uh, artistic output for right now? Yeah. What about doing some independent films? Yeah, um, I got to. Um, well. So I gotta get subs who do you think I should subscribe to? Backstage? Is that the where people are going? Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't really know. I mean, I threw out the independent there because we have a shitload of independent film creators that watch our show, um, that are involved with other outlets that we're involved with that might watch this or listen to this later and say, Oh right. shit, you know, Richard would do an independent film. You know, and then they reach out and they say, hey, can you put me in touch with Richard or, you know, email wise or something? And we go, oh, you know, if he's interested in doing, doing independent film, why the fuck not? Right. And that's that's right. I I am. And, you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, there was an independent like there was a fan film called Valentine's Bluffs. And, um, you know, fuck, I did that for a couple of days shooting. And that was like, you know. Let's put it this way, under five hundred dollars. So I can come pretty reasonable, you know, you know, if you want to use me. Uh you know, you give me a place to stay and um a hundred a hundred two hundred bucks a day, and I'll probably do a lot of work for you. So uh, I'm definitely interested in doing um independent film, like uh you know, and some uh, of these independent films do really well. well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like officially I'm a member of SAG and I probably shouldn't brag about this, but uh you know, I'll do you know, I'll do the ind independent film if somebody comes knocking on my door. I, there's, I a, there's, to, a uh, of, there's a lot of SAG actors that do independent film. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, huh? I'm not the only guy, huh? 
No, I mean there's right. a ton, there's a ton of 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 SAG actors that still do independent films only because they love. I mean, er, fucking Eric Roberts does independent film. Yep. And yeah. the reason he does mm -hmm. it is because he he loves the way that the the independents are doing it because they're so involved with their film. It's not like a Hollywood production where it's like, hey, go sit in your fucking trailer, come out here, do this, go sit in your trailer. You know. It's, yeah, it's I can more, do. I can make a. You can adapt more, you know, on right. the fly. Right. Yeah. 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 Burkett, Burkett might yeah. be interested in doing something with him, too. Oh, Sean Burkett. Yeah. Sean yeah. Burkett. Yeah. yeah. He does a lot of horror shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, just, he just uh, came out with uh, Stranded, which is like a Stranded, yeah. movie. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, we, we, uh, we interview a lot of independent film creators. We have more coming on in the, in the near future, too. So and they pop up all the time and they One love of Nancy's a name. Just came out. Uh, some girl, the girls too, or the girl too, or something like that. Yeah, I know she was working on something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, My yeah. Facebook page is flooded with famous people. I see all. I don't fucking know. I just go. Okay. <laughs> I just I just hit like 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 done. So um, whoa, where'd he go? He must have got he a phone just call. Just didn't like being on that yep. side. Yep. Is he? There he is. <laughs> so when you when you gotta uh, just kind of kick back and you want to chill out and relax, what kind of movie do you like to put on? Ah, uh, this sounds pretty corny, but uh, oh god, who was the guy that fucking directed The Shining? Um, um what the hell is his name? Yeah. What's well, his name again? Kubrick. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. Yeah. yeah, Kubrick. I was just, I just fucking sat back and kicked back watching Barry Lyndon, you know, for free on my, uh, on my YouTube television. And Kubrick made Barry Lyndon back in 1975. And Barry Lyndon is a fucking period piece. And um, it's actually, I hate to sound like an artsy fartsy guy, but it is very beautiful cinematography. And uh, this, you know, this moving theme music, um, it's very infectious. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's stuff like there's that I relaxed and watched that recently. And then, there was a movie called Control, which is now, again, I forget this fucking guy's name, but this guy was the, he was the band leader of a band in England called Joy Division. And uh, he was epileptic or not and had some serious problems and he ended up committing suicide. But the movie was really about him and the rise of the band Joy Division. <laughs> and... Um, I enjoyed that movie a lot. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then there's a, oh, shit. There's a science fiction, uh, there's a new science fiction series that's streaming right now that, oh, Christ. God, they're fucking, I, I'm lucky I remember my lines if I, you know, just for a movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but uh Halo? Is there is there something called Halo? Yeah, yeah, there is something yeah. called Halo. Halo. Yeah. Yeah, it's based yeah, yeah I, I watched game. the whole season. I, I sort of binge watched that uh a couple months ago. And like I guess there's a second season out. Like I I probably like to get around to watching that, I guess. I guess yeah, I heard yeah. it was really good. I haven't had a chance to watch that, but I heard it was really good. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean I I just recently saw ISS. How is that? Um, I really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, I went to the theater and saw ISS. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was it was a great suspenseful kind of a uh, reality hits home kind of shit too. Yeah, you know what I mean. I thought that was well done. Yep, yep, yep. That, yeah, yeah, and, I heard um, it. The Beekeeper. Oh, uh, I've been meaning to watch that too. Yeah, mm. that's fantastic. Was it? Yeah, fantastic. With Jason Stratham? Yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to watch that. 
Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck on. Uh, I'm stuck on uh, Hell on Wheels. Oh, that's a great show. Yeah, I, I never had seen it, and I was going through the Pluther. <laughs> I, I've watched it through twice. The, the reason it's on the Pluther is because of me. I was well, just yeah, like, you I, know, uh, and Le Leo had mentioned it, and I'm like, you know, because I I love that type of shit, that the fucking westerns. Same here. You know, the railroad building and all that, and I was like, oh, you know, let me watch the first episode and within the mm -hmm. first three minutes dude got his fucking brains blown out i'm like oh i love this already yeah. that's and not yeah. like um hot wax zombies on wheels is it no no oh, okay no it's all of it's all about um the union <laughs> pacific and the central pacific railroads racing basically being built cross country yeah yeah yep. um but it was just the, the way that it was done was really fucking cool it's really cool it's really cool there's a lot of a lot of killing and blood and shit. Yeah, in it. yeah I was like, <laughs> good oh, stuff. Good stuff. Mm. So we are yeah. getting close to time, but Richard, I mean, it's Valentine's Day. Is there another song that you would like to play for for, <sighs> for the viewers? I mean, you had mentioned something. Yeah. Why don't we try this? <clears throat> I gotta learn the guitar. I have a whole band going. Wake to the wind, to the winter. And there's not a friend to help you through. Try and stop the waves behind your eyeballs. Uh -huh. Drop your reds, drop your greens and blue. Now come on, come on down, sweet Virginia. Come on, honey child, I'm begging you. Come on, come on down, you got it in you. Oh. Got to strip the shit right off of your shoes. Thank you for your wine, California. Thank you for your sweet and bitter fruits. Yes, I got the desert in my toenails. Uh -huh. And I hid the speed inside your shoes. But come on, come on down, sweet Virginia. Come on, honey child, I'm begging you. Come on, come on down, you got it in you. Uh -huh. Got to strip the shit right off of your shoes. Bravo. Everybody has all the women in the shoes. audience. Yes. So <laughs> make sure you head out to open mic nights in the Pennsylvania area and you can catch Richard. And if you're <laughs> nice to him, maybe he will sign a boob. Yeah. There you go. For it's sure, man, a boob to sign, damn it. So, right? <laughs> but we are, we are getting close to time. So, Jar Jar, last questions for our amazing um, guest. One thing that you wish you could change about the world. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you got that too. I saw that one. There coming. are so many fucking things I want to change. Um, I just want, uh, Christ, I, I don't know, like, I don't want to get too political or whatever. I want our democracy to fucking go on for the next fucking 1,000 fucking years, man, in the United States. The United States of America, I love it, and I want it to last 1,000 fucking years. How's that? Is that all right? Sounds great. Is that too political? <laughs> no. 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 Nope, not at all. all right. Not at all. There was yeah. no game drops. There was no bullshit. Nope, was, nope. That was perfectly, perfectly done. Yeah, perfectly. All right. Done. God bless America, Jeffrey. So, and yeah, I um, 
I read that, uh, you know, it's a quote of yours, and I think we've talked about it before, um, but I came across it again today. And there's a lot of people out there that are searching for the truth, that are searching for who they are, that are searching and, and maybe uh, mad at themselves for mistakes they've made in life. And you came out and said, reality is your higher power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Um, okay. Fuck. I was at a fucking Narcotics Anonymous meeting years ago, and I'm kind of a religious guy. Well, I've been to but, those myself, so I fully understand. Yeah, yeah, and, and and the thing is, you don't have to be religious to get it. No. You don't have to be religious to get anything, because reality is your higher power. You can't fucking float away, you know, up in the air like gravity is going to keep you down. Reality keeps you connected, and... And the ultimate, oh man, it's like God is reality. Reality is God, you know. And the way, if you find out, if you feel like you made some fucking bad mistakes in life, fuck. Like I fucking often get into this funk. It's almost like, fuck. You were meant to make those mistakes so that you learn from those mistakes. And, yep. you know, Nietzsche said something like suffering is part of life. It's up to you to figure out the meaning of the suffering. So, you know, if you find yourself in that space, man, you're supposed to be there and you've got to find the meaning of it somehow. You know, it's a learning process that that's what life is. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I hope that's, yeah, I mean that's what I really. I got that's where it. that comes I from. Yep, no, I know where it came from. I know exactly right. where it came from. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, now, so, to me, my 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 quote that I've always lived with is: "Life is a labyrinth of dreams, from which there is no escape." Wow, I could dig it. Look at Jeff being all deep. Yeah, so there's always I'm, one. There's always another dream, right? I'm a poet. Uh, that's what gonna... I do. I thought he was going to be like yeah. roller lizard girls from <laughs> Planet green, X. I don't green, know. green roller lizard girls. <laughs> yes. Green, they got it. Oh, blue, blue's okay. Oh, blue. like blue. Yeah, he likes right. Smurfs. I he likes like Smurfs in the X Men. I like Mystique. Yeah. Oh yes. So I'm going to flip it in a whole different direction because these two got deep on you. So one thing that our producer likes to ask our guest before he he closes out the shows is. What is something that Richard completely dorks out about? Like something that nobody would know. Uh, for instance, one of the guests that we had or that he had on dorked out about the um, history of sunken vessels. Is there something that Richard dorks out about? Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> it's been a lot of fucking here on it, Valentine's night. That's the new quote. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. We're gonna get a it's shirt. It's just fucking. It's it's Roman and Greek. It's ancient fucking uh, artillery. It's uh, it's uh, it's those not. It's the armor that they wore on themselves and their helmets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I kind of geek out about. There's a guy on YouTube called Metatron, and I watch his fucking channel all the time. And he's always talking about armor and Greek armor and Roman armor and, you know, did the Celts run into battle with fucking no clothes on or did they or, and, um, and actually I find that hard to believe that Celts would run into the battle with their fucking, their junk right. hanging out, but, uh, maybe they did a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. But maybe anyways, it only, um, maybe it was the only sword they could get their hands on. <laughs> that would be... I can't imagine how high you'd have to be to fucking run in a battle with your junk hanging out. All up. right. Oh, my God. But, yeah, but I guess, you know, I don't know, like, uh, what, centurions, what did they mm. did 
you know what what they did back in Rome. I was I was interested the other day to learn that the centurions were actually very literate. You would think they were stupid, but now they were very literate because they had so many, so many responsibilities and so many counts they had to have. And uh, well, that explains the Russell they were Crow. counting. That yeah. explains Russell Crowe because of the yep. gladiator. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 No, For that's sure. I, I love that shit too. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So yeah, you know, um, but we are almost out of time, folks. So I gotta wrap this up because I know Jar Jar probably has to go uh, do something else. Oh, always. <laughs> and uh, you know, Jeffrey wants to eat, and Richard's gonna play his guitar. So uh, right. So Richard, where do you like interacting with your fans on the social medias? Um. You know, I'm just a fucking old man. Um, I still, I'm still talking with people on Facebook. <laughs> like, I know that's not very hip, but uh, I still do. And then on Instagram, RJW Esquire. And then um, I got, you know, I got a YouTube channel. Like anything, anytime I play music or do any, you know, in my old stand-up routines or whatever the fuck, they're still on my YouTube channel. And, um, you know, RJW Esquire is, uh, is really where to look for me. RJW E S Q U I R E, you know, and you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, RJW Esquire. No, so my, towards, uh, I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> my space? Is that what you asked me? Yeah. <laughs> I used to. Yeah. And I, yep. I think that everybody's yeah, dead, right? On that. You know. Right, right. Everybody migrated from MySpace, right? I don't know. <laughs> right. Jar Jar. Uh check me out on Facebook, uh Jeremy Courtney. Uh check out Splash Pages Tuesday night at 8 p.m. We're live. We stream on YouTube and Facebook and other places that I don't remember. And uh that's about it for me. Yeah. Oh, pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff well, Ray. Uh, yeah, we're on Facebook, talking with the dead. Go to stilltoken.com. Everything's on stilltoken.com, stilltoken.com. You can get the comics, you can get the book, you can watch all of our previous episodes. Which I was going to actually the other day. I'm like, fuck, that many? Right. What am I? What am I nuts? Yep. I didn't even want to fucking do this. But mm -hmm. all you people out there, I guess you kind of like me for whatever fucking reason. I don't know. But just go to stilltoken.com. You'll find out everything you need to know. And our novel is out. Make sure you go to get it. It's available. You can get it off our website, Barnes and Noble, uh, Amazon, and. Look us up for signings. We've got an event coming up oh, not this weeks. weekend. Next weekend, uh, we will be in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun for Expo Canna, where they're doing the X Cup. And then I think shortly after that, in March, we will be at Northeast Comic Con. And we'll be following that up with Nikan mm -hmm. in Boston at the Heinz. Right, and then right after that, we'll be in Vermont at the Sci-Fi Fantasy at Expo. At the Sci-Fi Fantasy Expo, yeah. Really? This shit's going to start happening already? I am fucking ready for this shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You it's know? that time of year. I'm not, yeah, done you had... I'm not done hibernating. Dude, you had your two months off. <laughs> that wasn't two months off, dude. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, no, it was not. <laughs> But no, man, in all seriousness, I want to thank Richard for coming out and hanging out with us tonight on Valentine's Day. You know, My Bloody Valentine 3D, kick-ass movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Get off your ass. Go out to the events. See these people. Chat with them. They're great people. I mean, I'm telling you. They, they, they He'll even serenade you. He will. He will serenade you. He serenaded Jeff tonight. I mean, shit. Valentine's Day, folks, you know. Um, you know, like Jeff said, stilltoking.com. Uh we do have a special episode this Friday at 7 p.m. We will have the producer and the marketing director for Expo Canner on. So it's a half hour episode. If you got questions about that event, pop on, talk, talk to us. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, as always, thanks for joining us. To all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do so people like us can do what we do. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. We are out of here.